y'all my name is Brianna aka Hooked by Brianna and welcome or welcome back to my channel if you couldn't tell by the title of the video today we're going to be making a crochet puffer mini skirt or just skirt in general so here are a few examples what I mean so we have this white one which I make in this tutorial and then we have the original one which is this dark brown that you might have seen on my TikTok or my Instagram and a lot of you requested one of these so I decided to show y'all how to make one because it's pretty simple. You probably think it's harder than it really is. So let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. And yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with someone you think may want to make a puffer skirt of their own. But I hope you guys enjoy and comment down below your New Year's resolutions because it's almost 2023. What are your goals for 2023? Whether that's crochet, working out, cooking, whatever you desire. But let me start rambling and let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. So here is the sketch of the skirt that we will be making today. <laughs> um, so as you can see here, we have three different sections. These measurements determine how long your skirt will be. So for my original brown skirt, I made each section approximately three inches long so if I do three plus three plus three that's nine inches long without my waistband which the waistband is one inch so my total skirt length was ten inches long I know that is pretty short for a lot of people so I'll give an example of a longer version that you can make so we already account for the waistband that I didn't draw but it's one inch and then if you do four for each, then you will have approximately 13 inches long. And then if you do five, that's approximately 16 inches long. So this is just for reference. If you do want to make your skirt longer, just make these pockets longer, depending on the length that you want your skirt to be. So let's go ahead and start making a quote unquote pocket, which is this. I refer to these different sections as pockets since we're basically making little pockets or pillows. We'll call it pillows, I don't know, but yeah. So as for the width of your skirt, we are working in like a tube and we're going to sew it on one side. So, oops. So just make sure that you make this first tube or pocket or pillow wide enough to stretch around your waist. So I made mine approximately 32 inches wide. And for this section, I made mine approximately 36 inches wide. And for this one, I made it about 40 inches. So just make sure this bottom one fits comfortably around your hips. Everybody's measurements are different. So just make sure you are trying on these tubes as you are making them. And I'll show y'all how I do that once we complete our first tube. And as for the top um, waistband, just make sure this one also stretches around your waist. So the materials you'll need is your favorite yarn. I'm using a weight six for my white skirt, but the brown skirt, I use a weight four yarn. Doesn't really matter what yarn you choose. I'm using a size five crochet hook because I crochet pretty loosely and I don't want it to have big holes, but you can choose your hook size depending on what yarn size you are using. Usually a weight four uses a size five, by the way, but I usually use a size 3.5 or 4 when I'm using a weight for yarn. You'll need measuring tape, you'll need a yarn needle, and then you'll just need some polyfill. You don't need this much by the way. First you want to make a chain long enough to fit around your waist. So one, two, three, four. I'll just come back once I make that chain. Now in the third chain from the hook, I want to place a double crochet. And we're just going to continue double crocheting until we reach the end of this chain. If you don't know how to do a double crochet, you just go in, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through one, 
you know, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through the last two. You just want to do that over and over. So now we made it to the end of the row and we're just going to place two more double crochets in our last stitch. And now we're just going to place a double crochet in every stitch along the bottom of the row. So starting right here. And then in this loop. And you just want to, again, make a row of double crochets. Now we reach the end of our row and I'm just going to place two more double crochets in this like first stitch area where we began so two more just so we have it even with the other side and then we're just going to slip stitch into this right here it's like the top of our beginning chain and yeah, now we have the complete bottom. This is how you want to create every start of a pocket or foundation of the pocket or whatever. So now we're just going to chain up three, one, two, and three. And we're going to go into this first stitch right here with a double crochet. And we're just going to double crochet around the entire tube like you're just completing a normal double crochet round. So I'll meet y'all once I get back to right here. So I just got past this corner. Notice how I didn't do any increases or anything. Like I said, I'm just placing a double crochet in every stitch for the entire row. And that's what you wanna do for every other row until your pocket is as long as you needed it to be. So I am now approaching the end of this row or round. So I'm just completing my last few double crochets. And then we're just going to count up three. So one, two, three. And we're going to make a slip stitch in that top stitch, chain up three. And then in this first stitch, place a double crochet. And you just want to repeat round two, like I said, until your pocket is as long or tall as you need it to be to reach your desired skirt length. So now that I completed my pocket, I just made sure to leave about three times the length or width of this pocket just so I can have enough to sew and attach this onto the rest of the skirt. And when I mean times three, I mean times three, this whole thing, when it's open, not when it's folded. We're just going to stuff our little tube now as evenly as we can. Can be as thick or as thin of a stuff as you like. Just make sure it is stuffed because this is how we get the little puff effect. So now we have it ready to sew closed. So all we're gonna do is sew this top seam. So grab your yarn needle. We're just going to start closing it. We just do this by going back and forth from one side to the other. We just go underneath that first stitch. And just keep doing that till you reach the end of the row. Now we reached the end of sewing these together and I just want to make a knot. And since this is our top pocket, we don't have to worry about keeping this tail. So I'm just gonna show y'all how I weave them in, which is super simple. So with this, since I do have the stuffing inside and everything and it's double layered, I just hide it in between the two layers where the stuffing is. And I just keep hiding it in here. Okay. 
and then at some point I can just cut it because this is long enough. And now you just repeat the same things for the middle panel and your bottom panel, which should start to go more towards your hip measurement than your waist measurement. After you make your second pocket, I'm also gonna show you how to attach it to the first pocket. So do not weave in your end right after you're done stitching it up like the first pocket. So now I finished my second one. And as you can see, it is about an inch and a half longer than the first. So I'm just going to start attaching it here and make sure I have it stretched out while I'm attaching it. And you can use stitch markers if that helps you make it even. But since mine is barely a difference, I don't think I need them this time. Now I'm just going to go to this right here. So like under the top stitch. And then we're going to go to this right above the bottom stitch right here of the top panel. And then I'm just going to continue going into this bottom stitch and right under this top stitch over and over going back and forth for the entire row again if you have a hard time making sure you evenly do this just use stitch markers and then I'm just going to go back so I can make this even oops and I recommend using a smaller yarn needle than I have because this big thing at the end gets in the way sometimes okay there we go now that looks nice and neat now I'm just gonna go back to where I was and now keep going back and forth this is the back side by the way So yeah, and the more you do this, sorry, my, my needle fell out, but the more you do this, the more you'll see a ridge forming on the outside. I forgot to mention that I just finished the row with attaching the top to the bottom panel. And then I created my third pocket, which is wide enough to go around my hips. And then I also attached that to the bottom of the skirt so it should be under the second panel once you attach that one and as for weaving in the ends you just hide it into the stuffing like i did for the first panel when i showed y'all now i sewed both pockets onto the first one and like i did here that's where i just went down into the stitches like i did for this one but since this is the last one i'm going to go ahead fold it over like so and then I'm going to make a seam here so I'm just going to go through here to the bottom so make sure it's with the wrong side facing out and I'll attach it to this corner and go all the way down here and I'll do it two times just so it's extra secure So I just finished weaving the end in, and now we can turn our skirt right side out. This is what the seam looks like, so that's why I personally like it on the side. Like, And now I'm just going to make the waistband. So you're gonna start off with a chain that measures about one inch. For me, that's about five chains. So in the second chain for my hook, I'm just going to place a single crochet and then I'm just going to continue placing one single crochet in every stitch for the entire row. And then I'm gonna chain up one, turn my work, and then make a normal single crochet here. And in the second stitch, I want to go into the back loops only, as you can see there, and then go into the back loops only for my next stitch. And then in my last stitch, I want to just do a normal single crochet. Now I'm going to chain up one, turn my work, 
do a normal single crochet in that first stitch. In the middle two stitches, we're going into the back loops only again, and then just doing a normal single crochet for our last stitch, and just continue doing that. Okay, now I finished my waistband. It is long enough to stretch around my waist and get over my hips at least. So now I'm just going to make a tail long enough to sew this onto the rest of my skirt, like so. And we're also going to go ahead and sew this waistband into a tube. So I'm going to connect it here and sew it. And then I'm going to sew it onto the skirt. And I'm going to grab the middle of my skirt. So with some stitch markers just to hold it in place. <laughs> so on these corners. You can do this facing inside out or right side out. I'm personally just going to do it right side out this time around, but it's not really that big of a difference. Now I'm just going to start attaching my waistband to the rest of my skirt. So starting with this middle seam or your side seam, if you're making your seam on the side. So there. And I'm just going to go in and out of the waistband and the rest of the puffer skirt. Like so. Until I reach my middle seam again, which may be your side seam. And then after that, you're basically done with your little puffer mini skirt. So now I made it to the end of my row and I'm just going to weave in my ends like I've been doing and just hide it in the puff somewhere. But I'll do that on the inside since I did sew my waistband on right side out. So first I'm going to tie it to my beginning strand just for extra security. And then I'm going to just hide it in one of my puffs. Like so. And now I'm just going to cut it. Stretch it out. And do the same for the little string, even though you'll probably barely see it. <laughs> but this is the finished puffer skirt, mini skirt. And of course you can make it longer if you'd like, but this is the length that I usually make them. So I hope y'all enjoyed the video and that your puffer skirt turned out as amazing as you are. Um, hopefully it was not as difficult as you thought it was. And don't forget to send me your creations, whether that's tagging me or just via DM on Instagram or something, because I really want to see what y'all come up with. I know it'll be amazing. Again, I hope y'all had a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and peace.